Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Tevis Finn recording in room 114. That one was for you, Rob. Alright guys, let's get started. This is the end of Reconstruction Part 2. I'm calling it the ups and downs. Um, so the sub topics today will be Republicans in the South, um, the African American communities there, and the formation of the KKK. So let's turn to number one. By late 1870, all the former Confederate states had rejoined the Union under the Congressional Reconstruction Plan. So by following the Radical Rep Republican Plan, guys, the former Confederate states had all rejoined by late 1870. And many Northerners moved to the South, um, even taking positions in the new state governments. Southerners had a name for these people. They referred to them, these newcomers, as carpetbaggers. So here's what a carpet bag looks like here on the right, um, because they just describe them, you know, arriving in the South with these big suitcases made of carpet fabric. Um, we're going to keep filling in this, guys. Many, um, you know, viewed them as intruders, you know, trying to take advantage of the South. Um, there were mixed reasons for why some moved to the South. Um, you guys can put down, you know, there was some corruption, you know, some in, um, seeking to take advantage uh, financially. But there were also, you know, um, job opportunities. Um, northern school teachers moved south to help educate whites and African Americans. So there were different reasons. Um, but mostly you can see the car caricature here. They were despised. All right, guys. And the next group, the Scalawags. Um, Southerners despised the whites um, who worked with the Republicans and supported Reconstruction. Um, so they call these people scallywags. It was an old Scotch-Irish term um, for, you know, pretty worthless farm animals that were weak or underfed. Um, so that's how they thought of their former uh, countrymen. And so fill in down below uh, the mixed reasons for this group. Um, you know, many were uh, small farmers who, you know, were against the wealthy planters. Um, and some were also business people you know, who supported the Republican plans to develop their economy. So also mixed, um, but not well respected. All right, guys, let's go on to number two, African Americans in politics. So you want to fill in the 15th Amendment allowed freedmen to take part in governing the South. And at first, um, the leaders were um, those who had been educated before the war, right? Like artisans or ministers. Um, you can also put down many had lived in the North and fought um, for the Union Army. The Republican Party uh, supported them, you know, by having them, uh, by helping them deliver their speeches, and they were able to, you know, draw former uh, slaves into politics. Um, so former slaves, guys, now um, became legislators, administrators, um, and hundreds, guys, served as delegates to state constitutional conventions, right? So they're part of forming their state new governments. Um, they also won elections, you know, to local offices like mayor, police chief. Um, Fourteen guys were elected to the House of Representatives and two were elected to the Senate. All right, guys, let's go on um, to this idea of black republicanism. All right, so what you want to put down for number three, guys, is many Southerners, um, you know, claimed that this um, black Republican Party ruled the South. Um, this was an exaggeration, but did reflect some deep resentment. So many white Southerners did vote for the Re Republican Party. Um, you know, why? It's, it's because of some of the reforms, you know, that were actually helping their economy. And, you know, some of them really resented the wealthy planters who had joined the Democrats. So um, let's talk about some of their reforms. So you want to put down that they repealed many of the black codes. Um, they established state hospitals, um, you know, for orphans, for the mentally ill. Uh, they rebuilt, uh, you know, bridges, roads, railways, um, and they established um, a system for public schools. All good. Next, guys, many state governments um, you know, had to borrow money to get these programs going, and so they had to impose high property taxes. Um, so many property owners 
um, were unable to pay these taxes and they lost their land. Um, there was also political corruption. Um, government officials began accepting bribes, right, because money was scarce. This is called graft. Graft is gaining money illegally through politics. It happened on both sides, but it definitely gave the Democrats another issue that would help them regain their power in the South. All right, guys, number four is African-American churches. Here is a great picture of one from the past. Um, so you want to put down religion had long played a central role in the lives of, um, of the former slaves. You know, now slavery is gone. Let's go on to the ne sec pa second page, guys. Now free, they began building their own churches. And these churches, guys, served um, as the center for their communities. Um, so they housed things such as social events. Um, they were for schools. Um, political meetings, and then in rural areas, guys put down church picnics, you know, um, anything recreational and social would be able to draw people away from their farms. And in many communities, guys, churches act as a unofficial court, so it would promote social values, settle disputes, um, and even discipline individuals for uh, bad behavior. And so under number five, guys, for education, you want to put down by 1870, uh, the Freedmen's Bureau had built uh, 4,000 schools and hired 9,000 teachers. And so by 1876, um, about 40% of African American children were enrolled. Uh, we're going to go on to African American colleges and universities. Uh, the most famous is pictured here. It's called Howard University. So you want to put down that it started um, as a place for African American ministers. And it re the idea really spread. And the founder of the Freedmen's Bureau, guys, General Oliver Howard, um, really expanded it to, um, to be this really um, prestigious college and also the first law school for African Americans. And in 1881, guys, Spelman College was founded. Um, so it's the first college for African American women. Um, so I have the first students pictured here and um, our first lady speaking at Spelman College today. And also important in Alabama is the Tuskegee Institute. Um, so their first teacher was Booker T. Washington, pictured here. Um, he became a very important African American leader, and we will talk about um, his ideas in the next unit. So here's a picture of Tuskegee. All right, finishing up, guys, with number six, the Ku Klux Klan. So guys, African Americans faced intense resentment from many Southern whites. So instead of striking openly, some Southerners formed secret societies. The largest of these was the KKK. You guys want to put down, it was started in Tennessee by former Confederate soldiers. Here is their leader, Nathan Bedford Forrest. Definitely know him. And its goal, you know, was to um, drive out the carpetbaggers and intimidate African American voters to regain um, control of the South for the Democratic Party. They disguised their identities, you know, by wearing the hoods, by meeting at night. Um, and what they would do is they would break up um, meetings for, the, for Republicans. Um, they would drive out the Freedmen's Bureau officials. And they would also burn the African Americans' homes, schools, and churches. The KKK's activities, guys, outraged President Grant and the Congressional Republicans. So they passed uh, several acts to fight back. One was called the Ku Klux Klan Act, um, you know, which tried to outlaw the activities of the Klan. Um, so guys, more than 3,000 Klan members were arrested. Yet, Southern juries convicted only about 600, and fewer than that served any time in prison. We have lots to talk about on Block Day. Be ready. This is Mrs. Tevis Finn signing off.